Welcome to Church of the Chair, where the only thing better than reading a great novel is rereading it. I'm your host, E, and today, we're repeating ourselves. This is going to be another discussion video, so no edits this time around. We're just going to jump right into the topic, and that topic is the books that I have enjoyed rereading the most. I went into this, not challenge, but this topic with a couple things in mind. I could make this all about Stephen King, which uh, my buddy Derek, who's a longtime viewer of the channel uh, and even a member of the channel, brought up he would like to hear my top five or the the Stephen King books that I like to read the reread the most. And I will probably end up doing that eventually. But I got to thinking about it, and I talk about how many times I've read Stephen King's books. Every single book he's released up until Fairy Tale, I have read no less than three times. And the one that I read the most is It at 18 times. And the 19th one is probably coming up pretty soon because I just miss reading the book. <clears throat> or I could have went along the lines of my just books that I have reread. Uh, I have reread quite a few books in my lifetime and they don't always hold up. So I figured I would pick my favorite ones to reread instead of just listing off all the books that I have reread. Um, also, since this is a this is a discussion video. I hope to see you guys down there in the comments telling me books that you love to reread, read a second time, third time, so on and so forth. Uh, also, I want to hear from people who do not like to reread books, and I want to know why you don't like rereading books. For me, it's absolutely no difference between rereading my favorite books or watching a movie that I have seen multiple times. I've seen Howard the Duck hundreds of times, and yes, no hyperbole, no exaggeration, it is my favorite movie of all time. I've probably watched it easily, easily over 100 times because I've worn out three VHS tapes and one DVD, and I have a new DVD and a Blu-ray of it. So I'm a little bit of a fanboy when it comes to Howard the Duck, but it's a very special movie to me. So I'm gonna, I picked out uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, five books that I'm constantly picking up over and over again, uh, especially when I need a comfort read, and I think at least three of them are going to be surprises, because I don't talk about these books a whole hell of a lot, and I probably should talk about them more. The first one that I picked up is Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. You guys know I'm not too much into police procedurals, procedurals I that's one of those words I can't say properly um, or or detective fiction or anything like that but this book blew me away the first time and I had the first time I read it and I've been rereading it ever since I even have this wonderfully beautiful uh, limited edition from was it letter no it's sunt up sunt up I have this one there should be an unboxing on the channel uh, if you're interested in that. But Francis Dollarhide, the serial killer in this book, is one of the best villains of all time. In fact, I believe if you go back to my Top 5 Friday video about my favorite villains of all time, he's he's in there. Um, I really enjoyed Manhunter, which was the first adaptation of this book. Um, I did enjoy the Edward Norton reboot. Uh, with Anthony Hopkins finally playing uh, Hannibal Lecter again, whereas Brian Cox was in Manhunter. But my favorite portrayal of Francis Dollarhide is from the TV series Hannibal. Absolutely amazed me. I, I loved it. They got everything right. They did change quite a bit, don't get me wrong, but I still absolutely loved it. Um, and also, I would say that it's the closest one to the book uh, as far as certain scenes are are concerned but yeah um this one i've read the entire hannibal series all the way up to the what hannibal rising i'm not interested in that one whatsoever i tried reading kari kara mora mori uh that book i couldn't even get into it so those of you who've been waiting like five years for my review of that one it ain't gonna happen but yeah I love rereading Red Dragon. I blow through it in just a couple of days. Um, it is easy to read fiction, but it is also it also has more literary depth than your usual thriller. Uh, the next one is one of my favorite books of all time. It's not in the top 20 anymore. You guys have seen the new top 20, but this one will always hold a special place in my heart, and that's Twilight Eyes by Dean R. Kuntz. Uh, the joke goes, the 
soon as he dropped the R from his name, he dropped something special. But anyways, this is a story of Slim McKenzie uh, joining a carnival uh, shortly after the assassination of uh, JFK, and it is... I don't, I don't, I don't know what to, what else to say about this book. This book is amazing, but for me, the book ends about page two fifty three hundred. Uh, Dean Koontz originally published Twilight Eyes without the other half that's outside of the carnival, and then he came back later and put the book all together. But for me, when Slim leaves the carnival, that is the end of the story, and I've read that at least a dozen times. I would say, actually, it's probably more like 20 at this point. Um, but I always go through, uh, anytime I'm feeling like I want a very quick carnival story, I just pick this one up, um, and it's it's not superfluous, but it is light enough reading that I can blow right through it at any given time. Um, my, my favorite scene in here is... I don't want to talk too much about it, but one of the worst sex scenes Dean Koontz has ever written comes from this book. And I quote the line all the time. If you guys have been a fan of the channel for any amount of time, you know, or the, the before I left Twitter, what I quoted, uh, yeah, it, it's in this book. Um, I just find how, how absurd the scene is, and I love reading it, even though it is hella cringe. Uh, but yeah, if you have not read Twilight Eyes, I highly suggest you you try that one, um, especially if you're someone who doesn't like the new Dean Koontz stuff, um, and I'm talking like the last 20 years of Dean Koontz, definitely pick up Twilight Eyes. It's a lot of fun, um, especially those first two, two to three hundred pages. Just remember, for me, the book is over once he leaves the carnival. Next up is one that I harp on all the time. I think uh, this author is our second greatest living short story writer. Um, I'm also really enjoying her novel right now, uh, but I'm st still so in love with these short stories. I, I doubt I'll ever find anything to top it other than Clive Barker's Books of Blood. And that's what I always say. This one is number two for my favorite short story author because Clive Barker's Books of Blood are just... They're perfect. But that is Thing, Things We Lost in the Fire by Mediana Enriquez. Uh, my second favorite short story of all time is in here, and that is Under the Black Water. My first first place would go to Clive Barker's uh, In the Cities, The Hills. But this one, if you're looking for subtle, terrifying literary horror, this is the best place you could possibly look for short stories. I've never read anything like her stuff. And Under the Black Water is one of those insidious stories that get, gets under your skin and just stays there. Um, but yeah, she's easily one of my new favorite authors, um, and I'm hoping that more of her stuff gets translated. So far, we've got The uh, the Dangers of Smoking in Bed, and our sh which is another her first short story collection, which was translated to, into English second. And then this one, her second one, which was translated first. And then we have her 600-page novel, uh, Our Share of Night, that I'm currently reading and enjoying. But yeah, there, you can't go wrong with this collection of stories. And I don't, I've never understood the cover I mean I know it kind of it kind of ties in because the things we lost in the fire theme but at the same time I don't know I wanted a little bit more and I was surprised that you know my f second favorite short story collection of all time was wrapped in this package because it's a little boring for how amazing the interior is uh, next up we have my favorite Chuck Palahniuk book Hands down, over and done with. I haven't read one better than this one yet. And that is Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. If you guys don't know, I don't care much for Fight Club. I like the movie all right, but the book didn't really do anything for me. And yes, I get the satire, all, all that stuff. I get that. It's just it's not as much fun as books like this, uh, like Choke, Survivor, uh, Lullaby. All those other books I feel are so much better um, than Fight Club. But of course, because Fight Club was the huge David Fincher movie, you know, most people know about that book, but this one, I would love to see a movie adaptation of this one, um, and it, I, I just hope that they'd get it right. If you don't know, it's a story about a person with a disfigured face in the, uh, the modeling uh, and fashion model industry kind of deal. Favorite ending of all of Chuck Palahniuk's books is in this one. A close second would be Choke, but um, the... The less you know about this book going into it, the more fun you are going to have. Um, but yeah, I reread this one, uh, I would say, at least 
I just read it last, reread it last year. I would say I've been rereading it at least once every two years since I first read it in 2010, I think. Anyways, but yeah, don't read any blurbs or anything else. Just go out and get this one. If you have not already read it, it is a wild, wild ride. Now, we are going to take a break for a second because it is currently 102 degrees and I am not editing this video, so y'all get to watch me wipe my face off with a towel. The next book that I'm going to talk about, I've talked about it before, it is the second longest book that I have ever reread. Most of these books are relatively short, they're under 400 pages. Um, and of course, It by Stephen King is 1100 pages, just under 1100 pages. This one is see here <laughs> it is almost it's it's 771 pages and i've read i've read it reread it so far eight times and that is the goldfinch by donna tart i have talked about this book a lot so i'm not going to go into great detail just know that the story of theo and boris's friendship has stayed with me since i first read it and i have read it all the way through eight additional times after the first one but i don't always reread the entire thing so but i read it all the way through that many times but the number of times that i've just picked it up and read my favorite passages i have a paperback that's in the house that is the pages are dog-eared i really need to invest in those little stickers that you put on books but i will go back and i will reread my favorite scenes i do the same thing with stephen king's it um, and of course it is not here because I wanted to stay away from Stephen King for this one But if you want to see like Derek mentioned if you want to see me do a video Solely about my favorite Stephen King books to reread um, I'll probably leave it out of it because I don't want to harp on that one But if you guys want to see that let me know down there in the comments I may not re respond to each and every one of you guys, but I do read every single comment that comes through uh, but yeah, that's all the time I have for you today. Please let me know the books that you love to reread down there in the, in the I still want to say description. This is like the fourth video in the row that I, in, the, in the row that I've done this. Um, down there in the comments, let me know. And I like I said, I especially want to hear from you guys who don't like to reread, and I want to know why you don't like to reread books. Also, another thing is, if you don't like to reread books, do you like to rewatch movies? Do you like to redo anything, replay video games you've already played? I want to hear from you guys, especially you guys who don't like to reread. I want to know why. why. Why don't you go back to your favorite stuff all the time? Or do you, you just don't read the whole thing? Those are my questions for you. Let me know down there in the comments. But until next time, I'll hail the chair.